today I'm breaking down my hive. I have two hives. One of them didn't make it through the winter, and that's this hive, and the other one is going strong. This hive is kind of a non-traditional hive because I had some loose um, comb pieces that I ended up using in this hive when I got the bees. So I ended up sandwiching a piece of their existing comb that was frameless in between each of these combs. So the organic structure in the bottom of this is really crazy and it's been fun to see how they built it out accordingly. And they did do a lot of free forming, but they make some really beautiful patterns. So now that this hive um, is, has collapsed, I am going to do a couple things. I'm gonna go in and pull out all of the frames like this one and extract the honey from them. So I'll show you how I extract honey and then I'll show you what I do with the remainder of the wax that's in the hive. I don't keep bees to take honey. I only take honey from my hives that have collapsed and that's been more than enough honey for us. So my main goal is to provide enough forage and food and habitat and protection for them so that they can kind of just live there life. Let's get started. So I want to separate the late season honey from the early season honey. They taste radically different and the late season honey is this dark stuff that you'll see in here. It's an amber color, it's malty, it's really rich, it's fantastic with cheeses. It's a really lovely but super intense honey. Now the early season stuff you can see we've been sampling it, is this beautiful light, really light colored, almost a clear. And so that's floral honey. It's very mellow, it's very soft. For the honey separation, I'm just gonna put the comb directly into this rendering bucket. So this is a two-part bucket. And what they've done is they've just taken two of these food grade plastic buckets, they epoxied or rubber cemented or whatever they did, uh, and glued the lid to the bottom of this top bucket. Then they cut a hole out and just made really rudimentary connectors here to hold the two together. And there's a disc, a metal mesh disc that fits on the bottom and creates a false bottom. So that then goes over this bucket. You put this little bucket liner in, secure it with a ginormous rubber band or twine or whatever you have. And now all of the honey is going to go into this bucket in the comb and everything. So the wax won't go through this mesh liner and I have an industrial sized potato masher that once I fill it up, I just start smashing it. And if you have a warm place, like over a heat vent, um, near a fireplace, if it's sunny where you are and you can do this outside and let the solar heat it, the heat will liquefy that honey and it will all drip down to the bottom. And I don't know if you saw this part, but here's a nozzle on the bottom that you open and close to um, get your honey out. So you can leave this to sit over the course of weeks or however long it takes to get all of the honey drained through and you can still access and use the honey that's already been drained. I'm just going to use a hive tool and a paring knife and I, I might regret doing wax with my kitchen knife but I don't have a special one for it. Like all of these little bees. There's pe bees in there? There's bees in here. There's just pieces of stuff that looks unsavory I, that I don't want in the honey. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out and put it on my debris tray. I'm just gonna run my knife along the frame. I'm not gonna cut out any of the 
honeycomb that doesn't have honey because it's just a, a bucket clogger. So any of these little pieces that this is half and half, I'll just toss them in. So if you want to keep the honeycomb, cut these into just strips, put them, submerge them in a jar, and then fill it the rest of the way with honey. This piece has some of the dark fall honey, so I'm going to be careful to cut that out and reserve it separate from the lighter stuff. Okay, now that the honey has been all mashed up, it's still really cold out, it's March. So I'm gonna leave this bucket over my heat vent in my house. Every couple days, I'm just gonna smash it down a little bit more and then we'll have honey. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the process. It's a labor of love, um, but it's wonderful. I love knowing that I have pollinators in my garden and on occasion I get really beautiful honey from them. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. So this is what my wax project looks like today. It's been two days that it's sitting in there and it's about time to get the potato masher out and mash things around again. So that's the top bucket. Let me show you what the bottom bucket looks like. So here's what it looks like inside the bottom bucket. So I don't want to lift it off all the way because it's still dripping. But all of that beautiful clarified honey is just dripping slowly into the catchment basin.